Hi folks, Alex here. Uh, I did an impromptu interview with one of my uh, friends in Nagoya. His name is Adam. He's a comic artist. He's a smart guy. Uh, you should listen to this episode. Uh, Ray and I will be back in the next year. I don't know, but we'll be back eventually. Anyway, here's me and Adam just talking about whatever. Hi, I'm Alex. Who are you? I'm Adam. Hi, Adam. Hi. What's going on? Oh, I decided to drop by Critical Hit today. Fun. Uh, to see the cultural center of Nagoya. <laughs> I'm bunka as fuck. I do, like, kimonos and shit. Yeah, I was wondering why you were wearing that kimono and the full kabuki mask today when I came in. I have to maintain a certain level of decorum. Yeah, well. It's how I roll. Also, we have to do these shots okay. before we actually start. Kampai. Kampai. Or as you said, comps earlier. Comps. Mine comps. <laughs> you can't... You can't make a mine comp pun as I'm putting cinnamon-flavored liquor in my mouth. I'm afraid I already have. <laughs> That's a guaranteed recipe for going down the wrong hole. A great hole. I know a lot of great holes. Yeah? I've heard that about you. I'm a hole master. I'm a hole aficionado. <laughs> So, okay. Well, tell us tell us a little bit about yourself, because I don't know if the listeners know you. Okay. Um, I was born on May 16th, 1983. We, we can fast forward a little right. bit. Uh, my name is Adam Passion. Okay. My last name comes from the Philippines, as did my grandfather, who brought it to the United States. Of America? Yes. Nice. Not the United States of Mexico, which is apparently also the United States. Is it really? Yeah. Shit. Los Estados Unidos Mexicanos. Wow. Yeah. It's muy divertido. <laughs> That's right. Uh, I live here in Nagoya now. I have lived here for about, I don't know, 10, 11 years. And I draw comic books and I publish comic books of people living here. I hope the mic is picking up my nodding. Yeah, I Some think it is. I can hear the rattling yeah. of... <laughs> 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 Um, I, I well wh when it, uh, it does get is that's a sense is released. I do subscribe to your comic thing. What it, how exactly yeah. does that work? Like you uh, distribute comics from uh, artists. Yeah, that's right. So including your own, including my own. Usually, well, that was kind of the actual initial idea was that I if I didn't have a deadline, I wouldn't create anything of my own. So I would publish other people's stuff and include mine as part of the. You know, subscription. So yeah. that I had a deadline that I had to finish a book, otherwise my, you know, subscribers wouldn't get a book from me. So that was kind of the purpose of me doing that in the first place. But um, it was running regularly. Every month, a new book came out. Uh, you know, for what two years maybe. And then last, I think at the end of last year, I kind of took a hiatus. But tragedy I'm kind of, struck. Yeah, tragedy. <laughs> dun dun dun. <laughs> so I, I haven't. Uh, I took a you know a few months off, but recently I've kind of been getting back into the swing of things. So so when is when is the next one starting up? Because I've I've seen that was it the My Life is an ALT. Yep. Yeah. 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 I want to read that so bad. Yeah, I should have brought one for you actually today. Um, so we have there's two new books that have come out already, and I just haven't I haven't actually got you know my ass my ass. I haven't got my ass. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to find your ass. Yeah. Locate your ass. I I haven't uh, got my shit together enough to actually promote it and put it out but I will very soon so it, it will be launching soon and it will have uh, it'll be six month subscription so hmm. you know six comics once every month although I think now I'm just going to start sending them out when they get done and not have to worry about the monthly deadline but so that's uh, so that's six comics yes and you charge 3,000 yen for that yes which I want to say is a goddamned steal because <laughs> that's 500 yen for one independent uh, nine times out of ten, amazing comic. Well, I really appreciate you saying that because I several uh, several years ago I was doing an event here. Like this was after the, um, I guess this is a few years back, but this was after the big earthquake up in Tohoku, right? Oh yeah. And so there was a charity event, and I was selling some comic books of mine there, and all of the proceeds would be donated to charity. And and all these people, it was at a bar. The event was, and all these people kept walking by the table and buying beer, and they would come and look kind of have a little cursory glance and then I would say oh yeah these you know 
they're at 500 yen for a book and all the proceeds will be donated and they said yeah but then I can't buy my beer <laughs> and I was like oh my god like the, the amount of time I spent putting together the book and everything made me <laughs> really disappointed that it was the same price point as a beer and people would choose the beer over the oh so I appreciate you saying that it's worth the 500 it's yen absolutely for, so it's yeah it's pretty good and um so you do you ship internationally? Yes. Is there an extra fee for that? Uh, yeah. In general, um, there's the shipping is not included in the three thousand yen. So okay. shipping here in Japan is a bit cheaper, uh, significantly cheaper than it is in the U.S. But um, the whole world, everybody pays the same price, uh, other than Japan. Anybody outside of Japan pays the same price for shipping, which is, I think, if I remember correctly, was one thousand five hundred yen or fifteen dollars. Whoa. So. Yeah. Um, you know, so basically three, no, I don't know. My math is bad. Uh, However much that works out to per book. Regardless, <laughs> it's a good deal, and I recommend people sign up for it. Thank you very much. Because it's pretty yeah. goddamn good. Yeah, the one I'm working on right now, actually, I I, I was telling you a bit about it uh, before, but it, I, I went into this deep rabbit hole uh, on Wikipedia, or like a K-hole. K-hole. <laughs> I don't know what the word is for it. <laughs> I went into this deep hole... Uh, and you know, like that, you know how that happens. But this one, I was there for like a week. Like, I couldn't stop obsessing over this weird thing that I discovered on Wikipedia, and I kept like following the links, following the links, and eventually like got off of Wikipedia and was like checking all these other kind of side uh, sites. And so this weird story about mathematicians back in the '30s and um, espionage and. And uh, now I'm not into math, but I'm very into espionage. Okay. So I'm. Well, curious. then this, yeah, okay. this will be right up your alley. I like right math when spine. it's cool, and it sounds like this is cool math. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't actually discuss any of the math in there. Oh well, but um, I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I thought you don't like math. I don't discuss the math, is what I'm trying to say. Oh, I'm back in. Okay. <laughs> okay. Great. You're an easy win. <laughs> actually, speaking of math, huh. here's something that I wanted to ask you about. Mm. There is a. Mathematician named Paul Erdus. Have you ever heard of him? I no. Okay, that's good. <laughs> so Paul Erdus is this really weird Hungarian mathematician. Sure. This is another uh, Wikipedia K hole I fell in the other day, okay. and I, I would like to get your opinion on this. So Paul Erdus is uh, mostly famous because he's like one of the most prolific mathematicians. Okay. All right. He didn't discover anything new, but. Everything he did was, like, solving problems that existed already. Okay. He's just like, I fucking love numbers. Yeah, he's like, I'm just going to I'm gonna do this, I'm going to do that, and I'm going to do that. That one, oh, that one's open. I'm doing that one. All right, so he's, he's from Hungaria via the Bronx. That's right. Yeah, okay. that's right, yeah. Right. Yeah, that's my best Hungarian impression <laughs> right there. Great. So, so he's famous because he published over 1,500 articles in his life. Jesus Christ. With more than 500 collaborators. Okay. Collaborators. So he traveled around the world just like solving these open math problems with all these different people, right? And here's where it gets interesting. You are familiar, I assume, with the six degrees of separation from Kevin Kevin Bacon, Bacon, yes. Right? Yes. So uh, there is a... Erdos is kind of considered to be like the academic version of Kevin Bacon, right? Uh, So much that that academics have given this thing called the Erdos number. Because he's just got his mitts in everything. Well, yeah, he, he had like 500 collaborators. Yeah. So, okay. So there is an Erdos number, which is basically your degrees of separation from him. If okay. you've published a paper and that person has published a paper, you know, if you've jointly published a paper and yeah. that person has jointly published a paper with another person, you can find out how far you are from Erdos, right? Sorry, when, when did this gentleman live? Uh, he was active, like, for most of the 20th century. But I, mean, okay. I, th- I think he died probably... I can't even. Remember. I don't really remember. Maybe eighties or nineties, something like that. But he, okay. but he basically he was alive in the. He was mostly active in like the thirties, forties, fifties. I think. Oh shit! I think I'm not sure. He's an old boy. He's an old boy. So old, he's dead. So, there is, <laughs> there there are people on the internet, which is beautiful I in love this the way, uh, who have created a bacon Erdos number or Erdos bacon number. Whoa! So they combine your Erdos number with your. Bacon score, right? <laughs> of course. Which means to have an Erdos Bacon number in the first place, you have to have published an academic paper right. and starred in a Hollywood f- film. Holy shit. But I there's surprisingly more people than you would think. Really? <laughs> there are. So, 
Uh, let me give you an example. Richard okay. Feynman, yeah. Nobel Prize winning physicist. Yeah. He was on the Manhattan Project. I believe he has an air to score of six. Okay. What? Because he's, he, 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 he was in a film. I don't even remember what. And that film starred somebody who was in a film was in a film with somebody with Kevin Bacon, right? And his air to score, I, I you know, I think he's, he's got like an air to score of two. Okay. Uh, Wait, hang on a second. I want to back up a little bit. Okay. How do you determine that score? Is it like the first number divided by the second, or oh, are you they combine? They, oh, they're just okay. You just simply add them. So your okay. air to score, you have an air. So I think he has an air to score of two. How is that possible? He has a Bacon score of maybe four. Oh, so it's six. And he adds in six. Okay. All right. Okay. So. So the lowest possible score would be like somebody who has a really close academic connection to Erdis <laughs> and a close academic I mean academic a uh, close uh, film score to Bacon, right? Well, okay, I want to I want to pause it. I want I want to find out yeah. I, I have a question. Okay. What would happen if Kevin Bacon himself authored an academic paper? Okay, well then Kevin Bacon would have an, a Bacon score of 0. Okay. And then he would have you have to figure out how many degrees of separation okay. he has from his from Erdis. But okay. and Erdis is dead now, so he'd have to find a living colleague who published. Okay, right. So is the goal to get the lowest number? Well, I guess so. I, I, Assuming I, it's I, even a competition, <clears throat> like having an Erdis an Erdis Bacon score in the first place is pretty good, right? Because yeah. it means that you've published an academic paper, and you've sco- starred in a Hollywood film. Or not necessarily in a Hollywood film, I guess. But so I mean, Einstein has an Erdis Bacon number. What? Because he has appeared on film with other people who have. Oh my! Appeared wait. With him okay. When was it. Einstein in a movie? I don't know if he was in a movie. Well, I don't know. Or on film. I mean, in in that sort of capacity. Yeah, I, I'm not sure, but I believe he does have an an Erd- <laughs> I can't say this. I'm pretty sure he was in a Hard Day's Night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he was in Pulp Fiction. <laughs> You're that like dance scene. I don't really know. So, uh, so here's my question to you. Says bad genius fucker on it. That's right. That's, that's right. That's bad terrible. genius fucker. <laughs> I'm drunk enough to appreciate that. Kind of <laughs> Yay! I sh- right. Yeah, I should mention we've had several shots and several beers, so this yeah. is not going to be the most uh, eloquent podcast you've ever heard. Maybe not eloquent, but we're talking about higher mathematics. Yeah. So there's that so. portion of the brain that's going to kick in and force us to sound smart, <laughs> even when we're not. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so here's my question to you. What would you guess? Would you guess that there are more Hollywood stars who have published academic papers or more scientists who have appeared on film? I would say the latter. Okay. Now, I I can't say which is more, but I would... It looks to be that there are more Hollywood stars who have published academic papers. Right. Um, Here is an example. Natalie Portman. Yeah has an airless bacon score of seven. What? She published papers with her under her maiden name, or her maiden name, under her original name before N- she took Natalia the stage Natalia Porthmanis, yes. yes. I'm aware. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Porthmanication. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, I forget exactly what her Israeli... She has... I think she's Israeli originally, right? So I don't exactly know what her last name is. Well, but I, I think she is really hot. How about, how about that? I agree. <laughs> I agree. He's really, really hot. <laughs> Making it worse. That's my Hungarian accent again. <laughs> As Erdos says, she is really, really hot. <laughs> I, I believe they did meet at one point. <laughs> yeah, Good for her. And good yeah. for him. <laughs> yeah, I think I think he was in The Professional, perhaps. <laughs> it, was, it was John Renault. A young Natalie Portman yeah. and a very old <laughs> Paul Erdis. Yeah, we need a we need a hot dog vendor or a getaway driver or something. What can you, what can you play? I don't know. I can pretty much. I play watch. everything. I do everything. I could be priest. I could. Uh, <laughs> now we're now we're getting to running territory. <laughs> hey, I can't. Yeah, I, I, can't I, I don't know again. what the fuck Hungarian sounds like. I assume it sounds Germanic. In I have really no idea. Hello, I'm Hungarian. Hello. <laughs> In Hungary, Erdos has your number. <laughs> Gyarados. <laughs> so, okay. So, Colin Firth has an Erdos Bacon score. What? Colin Firth published an article, I think, when he was, you know, in university. As uh, let's see, it was about if your political leanings have a connection to your brain chemistry or something to that effect. Okay. And of course, he's been in movies. 
Um, so I think his is maybe six or seven. Now here's the weird part where it gets. This is where I need you to weigh in. Okay. Supposedly, Hank Aaron, the baseball player, yeah, has one of the best air to bacon well, scores. What was his academic field? He doesn't have any what? at all. But now here's where it gets weird. Hank Aaron hit more home runs than Babe Ruth, right? Combined. Yeah, so <laughs> then Babe Ruth combined <laughs> with... <laughs> exactly. Right. It's impressive. Babe Ruth had 714 home runs. What is that? In, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not metric, a baseball, I'm know not a baseball man. <laughs> yes. I don't know. How many Kelvin... <laughs> How many, oh, oh, how many several, Kelvin? <laughs> several Kelvins worth of home runs. Uh, this, we're, we're, we are embarrassingly revealing how little we know about baseball. Yeah, but apparently, it's... Babe Ruth had 714 home runs, maybe in a se- I assume not in a single season. I have no idea. Fucking I have, amazing season. I don't know anything about baseball. Holy shit. But he had 714 home runs. Yeah. Hank Aaron beat him, got 715. Yeah. Some asshole in the world discovered... That 714 and, 700, and 715 have the same uh, least common factor, I believe. What? Something like that. He, he was able to figure out that these two numbers, which are so close, have the same least common factor, I think, which is 29 or something. Like okay. That, right? He wrote, a paper, he wrote a letter to Erdos saying, wait, Oh, how, I wait, figured how, out. Hang on, how is that possible? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> how can they have the same common factor if they're only one off? Well, they have to have the same common factor. That's if the, if that's it's the point one, of a common factor. Same common factor as one. No, no, there's got to be a... I mean, you know... Is there like a decimal involved? No. no I, think, uh, I, I think it's 29. Maybe I just don't know math. But wait a minute! <laughs> so you're telling me 714 is a multiple of 29. No, no, you're talking about least common denominator. Oh, okay. I'm talking yeah. about least common factor, which is slightly different. Okay, pl- okay please explain that, because I'm stupid. <laughs> and I just I fucked think... up this entire conversation. <laughs> um... I wish I had my phone in front of me. The least common denominator and the least common factor are not the same thing. Okay. I can tell you that. What much. is the difference? The least common denominator would be... Yeah. They can both be divided by the same thing. Right. That's what I thought that was. Okay. But it's not. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Your math skills are on, di- on display. So some math shit. Okay. Right? Oh, yeah. Oh, I get it now. Yeah. Factors. Okay. Denominators. Math shit. They're different? Yeah. <laughs> That's... <laughs> this is going to be like... The most, <laughs> the most hated episode ever. Where people call, like call in and say like, "You fucking dumbasses don't know about factors and no, denominators." That's, that's not going to happen because we don't have a phone number for them to call in. Okay, so don't worry about it. All right. Well, stay off Twitter for a so, while. Yeah, lo- lo- so <laughs> long story short, Matt. Least this is not the important part of the story. Okay. Point is, he wrote a letter to Erdos saying, "Hey, I figured out this way to figure out that 714 and 715 have this strange point where they both." can be divided by 29 in this weird way or something like that, right? Uh, so, Erdos writes back. He's really kind, really, you know, whatever, supportive of this whole thing. Uh, Hank Aaron has this, like, signing or something. And the guy goes there to decide, to you know, go there to say thank you. Oh, you changed my life. I found this thing based on your home run record. I got in touch with Erdos. It changed my whole everything. And somehow or other, he gets Erdos to show up there, too. Okay. And he gets this baseball signed by the both of them. What? Erdos and Hank Aaron signed the same baseball. Where is this baseball now? I don't know. Oh, fuck. I don't know. But that would give Hank Aaron an Erdos score of one. And then he would get a bacon score of, I forget, he appeared in some but fucking does, movie. But doesn't the Erdos score, isn't that like contingent on you actually wrote part of an academic paper? Yeah, so that's the question now. Does that, the fact that they both signed the same surface, does that count as an ac- academic paper in well, your opinion? Uh, no. Okay. Absolutely not. <laughs> yeah, of course not. Because like, It's not academic in any way. Here's, here's a T-Rex skull that was in Jurassic Park. Oh, and also somebody wrote a paper about it. What's the skull score? Like, it's not actually a it's, thing that's doing anything. It's just on the side of what's happening. That's a really weird... <laughs> that's a really weird analogy to compare that. But, well, yeah. I'm, I, I, I see what you I'm mean. I'm thinking off the top of my T-Rex skull right now, so I'm not the quickest. So, it's not an academic paper. In which case, it's an Hank Aaron has goal. no air to score whatsoever, you okay. would say. Is that right? 
Yeah, I would say so. I think it, it hinges on you writing a paper. Okay. Or at least maybe being cited in a paper? I don't know how it works. I don't know how it works either. I assume it means you have to have an academic relationship to Erdos, and that's not an academic relationship, right? No, that's just, just hey, let's pal around and sign a ball. Okay, but... Hi. But in a, in a manner of speaking, Hank Aaron contributed to this person's discovery of these of this strange thing between 714 and 715. Okay. And Erdos gave... sort of gave advice via letters okay. to this person. Sure. That was published somewhere. Okay. So both of them contributed, but at least in the background, to this discovery. A contribution is not the same as authoring a paper. If, if I were writing a paper on the statistics of genetic defects in corn, and I interviewed a corn farmer, does mm-hmm. the corn farmer automatically get a score? Uh, a Fraioli score? Yeah, does he get a Fraioli <laughs> score? <laughs> Mine is zero, by the way. I wonder if there's a Fraioli baking number. <laughs> Oh, I don't think so. But how do you have to be content? How, like, in what weird tangential way do you have to be connected to you? Uh, you have to have had, uh, have to have. I, I, I have, I must have, uh, in the past ten years, finger blasted you at least once. <laughs> That's the score. So I have a one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're good. You're good. You're you're on there. Well, I, 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 okay. Uh, uh, never mind. <laughs> I was gonna say something crude about your wife, and I won't. Whoa. I mean, yeah, she's got... I know your wife. She's got I would assume that that has happened. So I have an air to score of two at the mat minimum. I know, a Fraioli score of two she's, at the minimum. I, I, I can't have ultra score, but I will say it's in the double digits. Wait, wait, wait. What's I would assume it's in the one. The wait, one. wait, it's not number of times it's I not finger blasted? No. Oh, okay, I take that back then. That's uh, Yeah, I don't... Yeah. I don't, this, is how, this has not been formalized yet. I don't know the rules okay. quite, quite uh, readily. Oh, Okay. How many degrees of separation a person has from being finger blasted by you? <laughs> that's a quenching question that you say finger blasted because finger bang and finger blast are they the same concept? Oh, it's very different. They're different. Very different. So blasting is when you're really good at it. Yeah. Or <laughs> really just, bad at it. You just. It's about the vigor. <laughs> it's. It's about. It's about the amount of effort you put into. Yeah. It. It's, <laughs> okay. <laughs> It's about how you clench your teeth and kind of frown at yeah. the person while you're doing it? It's about how much emotional shit I'm working through when okay. it goes down. All right. Yeah. Okay. I see. This is all common knowledge. Well, now, this reminds me of something that I, I clipped out of the newspaper because I wanted to talk to you about oh, it. Oh, the jumble. Yes, the jumble. Nice. What's the answer to this one it's, right here? It's uh, fries. Yes, I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. They always use that one. No, so I, I clipped something out of the paper recently. This was a woman in Pittsburgh. Oh. You being a person from Pittsburgh. Yes. I thought it might be Jermaine. Okay. Uh, she was, I think, over 80 years old. Okay. A person came into her home, robbed her. An interloper. Attempted to rape. Whoa, woman, whoa! Which is already... She told the rapist that she was, the attempted rapist, that she was HIV positive, and he ran off. What? So hang on, back it up. He attempted to rape her. Yeah, but did she, not. She claims that he robbed her. He attempted to rape her. In and the then, process, she said, "Don't you know I'm HIV positive?" Oh, she and, said that. Okay. And he split. <laughs> so he was like, "Look, I'm down. <laughs> I'm down with you being an octogenarian, <laughs> but I'm not down to clown if you've got the hiv." Yeah, that's right. That's right. Okay, yeah, all right. I ain't. I ain't about that hivy. <laughs> This is what he, I think he was quoted as saying. I think the paper specifically said, "I ain't about that hippie." <laughs> Great, said he. Uh, well, and it's anyway. shown up in so many <coughs> songs since then. That's right. So this is like this is like straight Pittsburgh culture, right? <laughs> oh yeah, we do that every day. That's okay. like yeah, like in a bad situation, claim that you have the hippie. Yeah. Okay, that's step one. Step two, if you're going to be r- robbing an old person. Might as well. I guess. I mean, it's. <laughs> I, I suppose we're trading on thin ice. With yeah, this topic extremely thin ice. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna lose Maybe my. We're, we're gonna, probably doggy paddling in under the ice right now. I'm gonna lose all of my uh, uh, Presbyterian sponsorship from this episode. You're gonna lose all your Tumblr followers. I'm gonna too. lose all my tum- Lose both of my Tumblr followers. All those SJWs. <laughs> I know all of your fans are SJWs. <laughs> 
all those insane people who believe that people should be treated the right way. Yeah. Those fucking weirdos. How how totally crazy of those. I know. Insane of those people. cucks. <laughs> beta cucks. Wait, is that what's a beta cuck? Oh, oh, that's the evolution of cuck now. It's beta cuck. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I thought there was already one, like a cuck ball Wait, or something that, like but that. But that assumes that, like, if you're the alpha cuck, that it's okay. I guess. Oh, I see. So the alpha cuck is like. <laughs> The alpha cuck is like the leader of the cucks, and a beta cuck is like being cucked by the cuck. Yeah, he's the cuck master general. Yeah, oh, it's all man. fine. I, I forget who's. Uh, somebody said this on Twitter. I can't remember who it was, but they, say what you will about cucks, at least they have uh, a wife and a good friend. <laughs> so yeah, you know what? You know what? Yeah. Okay, now this brings us back to what we were talking about because I was talking about Norm Macdonald. Okay, well special. you keep going because I have to pour a drink for myself. Okay, so you might as well get one for me. Okay. I have a friend that I knew in high school. And he's a huge Trump supporter. Tim? Tim. Fuck. That fucking asshole Tim. This guy that I know, and more than one, but there's a guy that I know who I actually really cared about a lot in high school, and I still I, I still want to. And I and I keep worrying that this whole thing, this whole <laughs> Trump phenomenon yeah. that has happened, has possibly caused irreparable irreparable damage between me and this guy. And it sucks. Because what the fuck do I care about Trump actually? Yeah. Right? You don't. And, and him, maybe him too. But we may not be able to be friends because of this bullshit. And so I, it makes me think, like, you know what? I know that he's a good guy because I liked him a lot when we were young. And he liked me and we were good friends. And now because of his views about how society should be run, I hate him. Yeah. And he hates me because of the way that I think society should be run. So... I don't know. I guess I wonder, like, where do you draw the line? Is it is it worth making a stand for these things at the cost of friends that, you know, well, are basically probably pretty good people, but they have really shitty views on life? It, it depends how good of a friend they are. Yeah, I, I suppose. I mean, you're going to have your beliefs regardless, but whether or not to bring it up depends on how strong that relationship is to begin with. Yeah. I mean, I guess, you know, social media has created this way with that, that that's one of the only ways that I interact with them now. Yeah. So if I was actually living next to the guy and I saw him every day, it probably wouldn't bother me whatsoever because we would just find other things to talk about. But the fact that we only really interact when we're talking about bullshit politics stuff now makes us hate each other. Yeah. So I don't know. I guess. Well, let me, let me contribute this. Uh, I, I think that personality can transcend political differences. Like, okay. fr friendship can, because I am very good friends with a guy who comes here to this bar very often. He's, like, one of my best friends in Japan. We have wildly differing opinions on, like, like SJW shit. Okay. Because if we were to, like, put us into categories, I would be on the SJW side and he would be on, like, Gamergate side. Okay, I think I know who you're talking about just by saying that. But... but like, we love hanging out with each other. And we make each other laugh constantly. Okay. And we play games together. And we have fun together. And we disagree so harshly on pretty much all of those issues. Yeah. But the fact that we love hanging out so much, like, we just, we don't even think about it. It's just like, it's our, we're friends. Like, that's it. I guess I, I guess that's the way I think things should be, maybe. I don't know. Like, I, I you know, I, I was listening just recently to the actual, like, the first-hand account of, like, the kind of, you know, the woman who was the whole linchpin of the whole Gamergate thing, right? Like, she yeah. was the, the reason that it all happened. Right. There was an interview with her and stuff. And, of course, if I'm going to fall either way on the side of it, I'm, I'm definitely going to fall on her side. I mean, you know, yeah. and I, I don't really see that. But I, as I was listening to it, I thought, I was trying to tell myself, is there a way to understand Gamergate and, like, to understand those kind of people and the way that they came to those conclusions? And I guess maybe there is. I, if I had to boil it down to its simplest essence, it's just young men who don't know how to deal with women uh, decide to hate women because they're frustrated. That's the simplest I can make it. See, to me, it seems like it's something different than that. It seems to me that it's about this fact that these guys found a world and a community that is their safe space. Yeah, exactly. And they, and they, hate, they hate the word safe space, obviously. But, but that's what it is. That's what it is for them, right? But yeah, it's like, oh no, women are encroaching, the, those evil women are encroaching on our, our boys club of video games. Yeah, I think so. so. We've, we've I think gotta, so. Yeah. And I think that those guys would 
would say that they're inclusive of women. If the women want to be a gamer, that's totally cool. Right. But they don't want people to dictate how games should be made. Yeah. Like if they w- except if, if that's the, what they're doing. Of course, of course. <laughs> but like, the, I think that their their opinion is that if the demand is for games to be made this way, and that's what the majority of the customers of the fan base is, games should just be continue to be made that way, and there shouldn't have to be this. You know, moral through line that goes right. that like that keeps things incredible. And I, I guess I can understand them saying that because this is their, this was their safe space for a long time, but it isn't anymore. I mean, there are games have been opened up now. Yeah. To the whole world. Yeah. And it's not like a boys' club anymore. And it's not. And, and I think some people are finding that very hard to deal with. Yeah, I think so. And I, so I guess I understand their frustration. I, I want to. I want to understand their frustration. So I'm trying to. But the fact is, like, I think that they suffer from the same problem that almost everybody suffers from, which is the fact that there are actual guys in there who are just, just total dickholes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. And they just, they actually don't like women. Yeah. They actually are really sexist and and yeah. just shitty. And so, I think that those people, they kind of, you know, the the other gamer gay guys kind of have to have the solidarity with the guys who are just total despicable assholes. Yeah, it's it's kind of what I'm seeing right now with the Republican Party in our own yeah. United States of Americano. Americano. Which is like... Watered down coffee. Like, <laughs> even if you're a Republican, even if you hate Trump, well, you're still on Trump's side because you're a Republican. It's like it's like with Gamergate. Like, oh, I don't believe with these women hating assholes, but I also believe in pretty much everything else that they're saying, so I have to be with them even though I don't want to be. Yeah. Yeah, that's, it. that's what it is. You know, and I think... <clears throat> okay. Here's something that I'm going on a limb to say, but okay. I think that the show Walking Dead is like everything that's wrong with American culture. Ooh, explain. It is this idea... Have you watched it? Yeah, I'm, I'm halfway through season five. I had to take okay. a break when they got into like hardcore cannibalism because I'm like, oh, that's gross. I'm gonna take a couple weeks off. Okay, well, but so I that, do like the show. All that kind of stuff is whatever. But the the running moral concept of that show is that as long as it's in the interest of our of, of our own group, right? Anything is morally defensible. Like, defensible. Okay. Yeah. Right. So as long as like it's okay to kill these other people even though there's very few humans left it's okay to steal their resources or to fight over these resources it's justifiable because we have to protect our group yes exactly okay. and it totally de- it totally is this defense of our in group kind of thinking which is one of the worst things about human- humanity in general and, and that's Japan. what causes nationalism that's what causes you know religious like bigotry or whatever yeah that's what causes whatever any kind of problem you can think of it comes down to this in group mentality that people have and I think that that show feeds into that idea that like these are our people and we have this right to survive and as long as our right to survive is being infringed on in any way everything is morally defensible yeah right yeah this is the whole thing like with the guys who keep a gun in their house because they want to shoot somebody who comes in to rob them yeah and it's like you know, I heard a Japanese response to that, which is, uh, you know, a, a celebrity here in Japan said, I keep, I keep the equivalent of like, you know, two or three thousand dollars just, just left there by the door. So if anybody ever comes to rob me, they'll open it, they'll see the money, grab it and run. And that means I'm safe, my family's safe. And, you know, so it's this whole totally different approach to the problem, which is like, if they just get the money and go, I'm okay with that, as long as they're not threatening me. Whereas the American approach that I often hear is that as soon as somebody steps on your property, you're okay to kill them. Yeah. And killing somebody who's after your stuff is not justifiable, in my opinion, like to me. So, I don't know. I mean, obviously, you don't want to reward people who come and try to steal you, steal yeah. from you, but, like, that response seems so much more... I don't know, measured and, and composed in, like, the idea of shooting somebody who, like... But it does cost a little bit. Yeah, it does. It does, but, but I, guess, I mean, if you have it. I mean, yeah. I have... Okay, I'll, I'll speak from experience. I've had my house robbed here in Japan. What? Yeah, my house was broken into, uh, let's see, in 2010. So Holy shit! Wait, are you, were you living in the same place you are now? No. Okay. Same neighborhood, but not the same house. Okay. Um, and it's a really... It's a really... Wait, were you living in an apartment? No, it was a house. Okay. But um, have what you ever, have you ever been robbed? No, never. So, 
it's a really, really weird kind of disgusting feeling because you feel like the very safest place in your life isn't safe anymore. So it's this really weird violation okay. of like your personal space and privacy, pri- privacy and the fact that you know that person has been watching me for yeah. however long to case the place and, and everything about it. And so it's just this really weird thing. And I kept thinking like, like if they had just, if, if it had been a matter of the money, I would rather have them just, I would rather give them even more money than they got Yeah. to protect that feeling of like safety in my home. Yeah. You know? So it didn't make me want to go out and get a gun um, or, or a bat or a knife or whatever is legal here in Japan. Yeah. But A but katana. It, yeah, a katana. A sai. Yes. Yeah. A bow staff. A nunchaku. Yeah. Like Michelangelo, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, yeah. I have never been robbed personally, but before I was born, my, my family, my parents and my older brother and sister used to live in uh, Caracas, Venezuela mm. for my dad's job. And they got robbed. Their whole house was robbed. Okay. While everyone was out during the day, and uh, my mom said pretty I much. I think in, in in Spanish it's it's called Roberto. Roberto. Yeah, they didn't get robbed. So yeah, Roberto. Robert Robert came to their house and just took everything. <laughs> okay. And my mom said the same. Okay. My mom said the same thing that you just said. It's like yeah, the, the, what I thought was the safest space in my life was now violated by some okay. asshole who just wanted shit. Yeah, it's a really gross feeling. Yeah, it's, it's a really gross feeling, and so I don't think that I would feel better. If a Robert, if like you know, a burglar or somebody came into my house, and I shot them dead, I don't think I would feel better about the whole experience. I think I'd feel grosser about it, to be honest. I don't know. I mean, the whole thing, like the, all those stand your ground laws, or like the self defense laws, or all those kind of things. Like, you took a human life. Yeah. And this is a comedy show, isn't it? Yeah. LOL. <laughs> Uh, well, I think we can r- agree that we both have, like, a Batman stance on, on... I was about to say comedy. I meant crime. Yeah, I think it's good to throw a batarang around them. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, people people can be rehabilitated. People can learn to not do that. That's what I want to hope. Yeah. That's what I, I want to hope. I, I, like, I want to believe that people can be good. Yeah, exactly. I mean, actually, you know what? Here's the thing. This whole, like, Bill Cosby thing, I didn't want to believe it at first. <laughs> <laughs> when it happened, yeah. But in actual, like in hindsight, when I looked at it, I thought, you know what? The thing is, like everybody keeps saying, look, even your heroes, even these guys who you think are really great, have the potential to be a total asshole. Yeah. But what it showed me was, even a total like degenerate asshole can have a good side. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And so it was this whole thing, like if there's a way to get to a person, what if somebody was able to get to Bill Cosby and show him, like, hey, look, you don't have to do this kind of shit. <laughs> You don't yeah, have to you're rape fucking people. rich. You yeah. can just date a girl. Yeah, like any girl. Just date any girl that you want. You don't yeah. have to rape people. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you could use that Jello money. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's a charming person. He doesn't even have to use that Jello money. He's a charming human being. He could just be like, you know, I would like to take you out on a date. You know what I mean? And it would be okay because he can just tell you funny stories, and it would be great. But I mean, <laughs> have you ever been to Ponderosa Steakhouse? <laughs> Let me tell you, they got these steaks. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> this is what Carl Jr. calls a six-dollar burger. You see, it's really good. You see, yeah, that's right. So I don't know. Like, I I think like you could take the opposite approach from that and realize that like yes, all of our heroes probably have this total asshole side of them. Yes, and. Conversely, all of the worst people in the world probably have some good point to them that is at least somewhat redeem- redeeming of them, right? Yes. Right. So, because I mean, I think I am a total shithole in, in a lot of ways. I, I would disagree with that. Well, you don't know. You don't know all the shithole. I don't know your me. super dark <laughs> shit. I guess. I guess I don't. But I also think that. I can I can put on the charm in other situations, right? So, I don't know. I think the humans are complex and nuanced beings. Yeah. And we are capable of incredible bad and incredible good yeah. in the same in, in the same person, right? Now, on this topic, you put out maybe a year, a year and a half ago, a post on Facebook asking people for examples of artists that they like who are also yeah. huge shitholes. Yeah. And my 
example for that was Koichi Sugiyama. Okay. He's the, the composer of the Dragon Quest series. He did all the music for Dragon Quest. He's a brilliant composer. Before Dragon Quest, he scored Godzilla movies. He wrote pop songs. The only reason he got into Dragon Quest was because, like, in his uh, 60s or 70s, like, he bought a Famicom Shogi game okay. that Enix put out. And he actually filled out the comment card and sent it back. And Enix got the card. They're like, are you, are you like, the famous composer, Koichi Sugiyama? He's like, yeah, that's me. Do you want to do some music for a video game? He's like, yeah, that sounds fun. So he just did it. <laughs> this is this is Japanese accent via the Bronx, right? Yeah, yeah again. Yeah, yeah that sounds fun. I'll Everything, do it. <laughs> I fucking love slime. This, this shit's great. That's more Trump than anything. Uh, slimes, I have the best slimes. My slimes are tremendous. Slimes. Everybody agrees I love my slimes. But like his whole thing is he's a brilliant composer and I love what he does. He made, he's made some of the most beautiful music I've ever heard. Yeah. He strongly denies that Japan ever did anything bad in China during the war. Yeah. To the point that he and his old man wrinkly ball sack friends put took out an ad in the New York Times in uh, I think the late 90s. It was a full page ad that basically said, "Hey, let's reconsider the war. Let's reconsider uh, those so-called facts, that fake news." That, that uh, Japan did bad things in China. You know, we never did yeah. anything bad, but it, but they did a lot of bad things. Yeah, right. And exactly. like, I, I I I say I want to like his music. I still like his music. His music's right. great. Yeah. I but there is a very important distinction in separating the art from the artist. Exactly. Well, I mean, I still. I mean, I I have like Bill Cosby's records were so important to me in yeah. my childhood. Like, I can't. I can't even count how many times I had listened to those things. My dad had, like, a whole collection of records, you know, and, like, all the Bill Cosby records were in there, and that, that's what I listened to all the time when I was a kid. And it was this way that I connected with my dad. It was this way I connected with my brothers and sisters. It was a really important thing for us. You know, and and like Dave Chappelle said in his special, like, he did all these really incredible things for, for black people in the United States, you know? Yeah. Um, so there is, you know, I mean... I think, you know, you're talking about that Facebook post that I put up, and people were talking about Picasso, and they were talking about... Wait, what's the deal with Picasso? I mean, he was just, you know, he, I mean, besides being just a kind of an asshole in general, but he was, he totally stole from his friends. Oh. Like, he stole, like, I mean, people say. People say that he stole cubism from his friend, like, Barack or whatever. Like, he stole... Barack like, Obama? Yes, Barack Obama. Oh, Barack shit. Hussein Obama. <laughs> Oh, Hussein Obama. Okay. St- yeah, oh, that stole. one. I was thinking of a different one. Okay. <laughs> Barry. He stole... He, he stole... He stole fuzzy lifty, fizzy lifty drinks. No. You don't do that. Oh, sorry. So he, um... You know... Um... But there's so many there's so many people like that. Like, uh, here's an example. In the comics community, which is my wheelhouse, like, uh, there was a big backlash against... Frank Miller recently, right? Oh, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. You know, and, I mean, Frank Miller, he's he's huge in comics. You know, like, you know, he made 300. He made... Batman, know, is he did Batman Year One? Batman Year One. Yeah. Or The Dark Knight Returns. Yeah. Uh, he made, you know, so many... I mean, he made The Sin City. He made all these really great things. And, and I was a huge fan of his when I was young. Um, but he's become a hardcore, like, mm. you know... You know, hardcore right winger. Yeah, stuff. And I've, I've seen some interviews with him lately where it's just like, ah, oh, yeah, I like everything you do except for this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and he even like made a comic book that was really kind of uh, Muslim bashing kind of Ugh. thing, you know, in recent in recent years. But his work is his work, and he is who he, is. you know. So I don't know. I mean, I guess, I guess. I think if we dug enough, I think there's a lot of people who we would probably hate if we were able to know more about them. Yeah. And luckily we don't. Yeah. You know? So, I think it's important to, like, I don't know, it's important to show your conscience with your money, who you support and who you don't support and stuff, but at the same time, you know, it's important to separate the art from the artist, maybe. It is. You know, it really is. Like, the whole ideology behind this bar is I'm not here to make money. I just, I love video games, and I love alcohol, and I love talking to people who like both. Well, I'll tell you this. The people that I've met here, 
and this is the only place I can think of, probably in my adult life, where I have met so many people just like, just casually. Like you know, I would come here, I don't know anybody when I when I arrive, and then I know several people when when I leave. Yeah, there's, and yeah. so yeah, just today, I mean, I met several people who I thought, oh, this person's really interesting, and I, I struck up a conversation, and it usually probably starts with us talking about some particular game or right. something like that or yeah but it goes it goes deeper than that and so you know in that respect i think that you've created something really good here which is it's a it's a way to start conversations yeah with i feel like yeah in regards to that i feel like whether or not people know it they have enjoyed video games in the past and yeah. they have memories of them and mm-hmm. if you you meet any random person they're going to remember mario they're going to remember mario kart they're going to remember mega man whatever it's in everybody's like subconscious. I enjoyed this game a lot. Yeah. I played it after school with my friend. I played it with my older brother. I played it with my little sister. I had a great time. And that automatically gets people to open up because yeah. it's a part of their past that they unironically enjoyed and had fun with. And here's another person yeah. who had that same experience. We automatically connect on this one basic level. And from that point other conversation becomes so much easier to access. Yeah. And well, I love it. I love seeing it happen in front of me. One thing about your bar in particular is that it is the one of the few places where I can see Japanese people connect to people who are not Japanese. Yes. I see that a lot and I love it. Yeah, that's great. I see that's that great. like and sometimes it's like the Japanese people asking the foreigner, hey, play Mario Kart with us. Or sometimes it's the foreigners t- talking to the salary man saying, hey, play Smash Brothers with us. But yeah. every time, I fucking love it. Like, yeah. That's one thing that I did not anticipate when I opened this place, that I would get such enjoyment from seeing those two groups mingle. Yeah. And I love it so much. It's really nice because I think that there's this, there's this sense with a lot of people in Japan because Japan has this kind of weird island mentality. Yeah. So they assume that they're really unique and that other people are not like that. And when they see that, hey, we grew up playing the same shit, all the same shit, yeah. we love the same stuff, and they connect on that level, it changes their whole perspective about yes. people, right? Absolutely. And they're like, hey, you know what? Americans played Street Fighter. Yeah. And they played Mario Kart. And like these are, you know what I mean? And, and it gives them a sense of pride about their own country, too, I yes. think, which is a nice thing, too. Um, yeah, I mean, when we were kids, I, I that's yeah, I I do love that when I, I have some salarymen who come here on business to Nagoya, like they live in Tokyo, they live in Osaka, but they come to Nagoya for business, and it's yeah. just them, and they're staying in a hotel by themselves, and they come here. There's a few guys who do this regularly every few months, and every time the conversation always becomes, I am like they say, I am so deeply touched by the fact that games had this kind of effect on foreign culture. Yeah. Because yeah. they really did. Like, Japanese... I still believe Japanese games are the best fucking games ever. Yeah. Western games have caught up in the past ten years, and they're not bad. I like a lot of those, too. Japanese games still always number one for me. Well, that's the thing, and that, that's the whole thing about that soft power, right? It's like... Like, everything that I see wrong about Japan is the fact that they're trying to go for this hard power where they're like, hey, we need to be a strong country again. We need to be this country that everybody respects in this way. Yeah. And it's like, you were at your peak. This country was at its peak in the 80s and 90s when they were just creating stuff that people loved. Yeah. They were creating products that people just loved. Like, like the Sony Walkman was with the coolest fucking thing in the world when we were kids. If you had that, like, bright yellow... Sony Walkman, it was just the coolest thing in the world. And, like, playing games and everything else like that. Like, as a little kid growing up in the 1980s, 1990s, like, I loved Japan, the idea of it as a as a concept. Because yeah. everything that I loved in my life was made there. Right? Yeah. And that's, so... That's the story that I tell Japanese businessmen when they ask me, why did you get into games and why did you come to Japan? And that story is... Okay, I was at my friend's house for a sleepover when I was nine years old, and we beat Mega Man 3, mm-hmm. and the credits rolled. And it's all these weird names that we've yeah. never seen before. Those are not American names. And we, we called my friend's dad over and said, Hey, what the fuck is this? We didn't say <laughs> fuck, but we was in our tone. We said, Well, what are these weird names? What, what the F is this, Dad? Yeah, what the F is this, D? And he's like, Well, he's calling him Dick. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> what the, this dick? The, well, yeah, we said, what the fuck is this dick? And, and Dick said, oh, the, these names look Japanese. And I said, what's Japanese? And he said, oh, Japan is a country. And a fetish. And a fetish. And <laughs> at eight years old, I realized I am into this country and this fetish. You know, I mean, like, like, like think about, like, how much of that 80s culture was, like, you know, like, ninja culture. Oh, like. my God. Did you know that ninjas were banned in the UK for a while? Were they? Yeah, like, like that's why, you know, Teenage Nin- Mutant Ninja Turtles were Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles. But, like, ninja movies as a whole were just straight up banned because they were just, it, it was seen as inciting violence. It was just too violent. Well, you know, Donald J. Trump has called for a ban on all ninjas entering the country. <sighs> That's probably Wait a minute, couldn't a professional ninja just sneak into the country? Yeah, a professional ninja. Right? As long as he's doing that as his main <laughs> as his main source of income. His visa status he's is just ninja ninja around. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I see on your resume that you have been a, a ninja for the last three years. Have I? And then he just disappears. <laughs> Especially when they beat Marvel at a show bots. Cutting out lines with mechanical precision predict and every flow of laser telescopic vision. Randomized and formulas and never repeat words. Algebraic lens turn endurance predicates and verbs. A flow bot is programmed to have their SL endurance as long as I am plugged into an alternating current. You thought I played robots with some sort of game, but when the flaws done came with a nanotechnical brain, all hell erupted. This is the corrupted mechanical attack interrupted by a sub dude from the calculator, integer orchestrator, artificial heart from black and dark bitter. Bending off attacks with galactic invaders. Haters can understand the flow bots are homemade. Beat by not making city seats. Hot solid metal slayer making baby. In the tree top, he's off cheap, bro. Stuff full of cheese while I draw a body that's blocked. Cheap, hot, it's on that. I ain't gonna miss the ninja of efficiency. I flow at 133 consistently. Dawson Linux for Windows, XP, I'm fluent in jealousy, the lust, and binary. I've eliminated all chains of human error. I'm known around the web as the best file share. So if you got the motherboard, then download my rhymes. If you hadn't heard already, the name is Optimus Prime. So can't be stopped with a 9 volt battery. If you want a battle pull up, then you gotta battle me. Adam, subtract him, the calculator, dude, because I died as water women instead of eating food. While I'm out punching, I calculate a function. And if I eliminate any number that you punch in. How many rappers do you know in a binary? Zero, one, one, zero, one. Zero, zero, one, one, zero, one. Now observe while I demonstrate my gun. Play this static trick, shoulder mounted Gatling. Earth rattling, well suited for battling. Oh, and the blowers come together like Motron or Megazord. Y'all scream, gun damn, am I they born? Full of my robots, no one's so I remember when I was, so I was a history major in, in university, and I uh, took a class on, like, you know, Japanese history. And when I learned about, like, the way ninjas actually were and how they're just, like, really <laughs> shitty, dirty... Dirty con men, kind of. <laughs> like, they dress up as women and then sabotage people and stuff like that. I'll and say this like, though. Hang on, sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, but like real quick, one of the most important things I learned at the Ninja Museum in Iga. You ever been there? No, I haven't. It's really cool, and they have they've got like ninja trivia. And one of the oh, one of the most the ones that sticks out in my mind is it's it's everyone thinks ninjas wear black. They don't wear black. They wear navy blue because against the night sky. Anybody will see you dressed in all black. If you wear navy blue, you blend right in. Hmm. When you're sneaking around, you don't wear all black. Because nothing is completely black. Like pitch black. In Except for that new pigment that they just discovered. Have you seen what? that? No. Oh, there's like this new pitch black pigment you can buy and you paint on things and you can't... You just It just disappears from sight. Are you sight. still trying to get me to do blackface? Yes. That's well, right. I'll think about it. This is it. my point to... Yeah. I need to pour a drink. <laughs> That's like reverse green screen. If you put that like all black on you, you just disappear from this from the shop. Black screen. Yes, black screen. <laughs> black screen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I, I guess I just had this really, really warm feeling about Japan when I was a little kid. And yeah. you know, like people ask me all the time, "Why did you move here?" And in my case, I was about to ask you the same thing. In my case, I just happened to marry a Japanese woman. Yeah. It wasn't like I had these dreams about being. Like living in Japan, I wasn't really in it, that super into Japanese culture. I guess. I mean, I had the same warm feelings that every kid did growing up at that time. And I grew up in the Bay Area, so there was a lot. We had a big Japan town in my hometown, so I ate Japanese food a lot. I really loved it. You know, I was aware of Japanese culture. I had a lot of Japanese friends when I was a little kid, but it wasn't like anything in particular that I really liked. But you know, like I just, I don't know if I, I guess people still have that really warm feeling now. Like there's this. When you look on the internet, there's a big respect for Japan. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of people who really like, and they think that Japan is this really, like, mystical, like, everybody's, like, super wise, and... Yeah. 
whatever. It's kind of it's kind of stupid. In that there way. is a lot to respect about Japan, but don't go overboard. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's the way people think of Native Americans. They're like, oh, they're all super spiritual and connected to the earth and nature. And it's like, have you ever been to a reservation? That's not how they fucking A lot work. of them are just dudes who are just trying to live. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's how I think about Japan. But, I mean, but I still do like that. I like that people respect, you know, that people think Japan is yes. cool and interesting. And, and it is. It is, yeah. It's, you know. That's why I live here. Yeah. I've been um, here for ten goddamn years. I'm not going home anytime soon. Lock. Not, not while King Baby is in office. King Baby. Yeah. <laughs> well, it doesn't look like it's going to be that much longer. Oh, thank God. Let's hope. But, um, you know, I don't know. I, uh, I would like to see Japanese people realize that point. Like, that's what it is. It's not about... You know, I, I just see a trend recently. And maybe that's reading the newspapers here. But it seems like people are trying to restore this glory... Of Japan, so it's kind of echoing what's happening in America with "Make America Great Again," i.e., get rid of immigrants. Well, yeah, exactly. It's Keep like Japan pure again. Yeah, they're missing the whole point of what makes America interesting. Yeah, those people, exactly. They they want to make America great again along the lines of what was never great in the first place, and that's what I think about these people in Japan is that they want to make Japan this thing that it never was. They're like, oh, we've got to be this strong country that everybody respects. And it's like, no, you just be the country that you are that people think is beautiful and it's interesting. Like, as an adult now, take away video game culture, take away all the, like, modern contributions that Japan has done. I still think it's a really beautiful thing. I think things yeah. like like haiku and origami and, and things like that are, are, really, are really beautiful. I yeah. really do. Their flag, their flag is, like, the... Like, I, I use that as an example of what is perfect design. Like, it's just beautiful. It's, it's a white yeah. space with this perfect geometric red shape. Yeah. It's just this, like, really, you know, and, and, and I think there's a lot of things that fit that aesthetic. Yeah. I like, for example, their national anthem is the shortest national anthem in the world. Is it really? Which I appreciated when I had to learn it for a junior high school opening ceremony. Which is funny because you know it and I don't know any Japanese people. Oh, I've already it. forgotten it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I know it's about uh, moss, and that's it. Okay. Yeah, Japan will prosper as moss on a rock, I think is the last verse. I don't remember what it is in Japanese. Well. But I think we agree we should all sing it. Yes. It should be One, magical. two, three, four. Japan. 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 No, that's Sakura, Sakura. Japan, we moss on a rock. Moss on a rock. We love Japan. It's a pretty dark national anthem though it really is yeah it sounds very somber it sounds like a funeral thing yeah that's from final fantasy 10 i don't know if you know that i think that is the national anthem isn't it no it's close it's, <laughs> yeah but yeah you were yeah you were right yeah kimi <laughs> yeah i don't know i i think uh, i think there's a lot of things like that where people are missing the point what people like about Japan is not what Japanese people think is the great part about Japan and that's the mis- I think I wish that they knew that yeah and I I think the same thing about America I think living living outside of America and viewing it from the outside I've come to appreciate certain things about it um, and I think that those are the things that people should be proud of rather than the things that they boost up on their own and say these are our really great points and it's like no like freedom what country isn't free? I know, yeah. I had to deal with that when I was an elementary school teacher because I'd have kids, like, 10-year-old kids ask me, is America really free? And I'm like, I don't know what that means. I mean, I guess. Like, are, isn't everybody free? Like, But are, are, is it? I mean, we have the highest incarceration rate in the world. So yeah, is that, so like, no. Are we, are, are we free? No, I, think I would say. What I took away from that was I, I did realize that, like, socially America is very free. Like, these days... Yeah. You can get gay married. You yeah. can you can be who you want to be. Get gay married. <laughs> I like how that's a verb. I'm thinking about doing it right now. <laughs> but like in Japan, you just cannot. You can get a civil union, I think, in Shibuya, and that's it. Yeah. But that's not even considered marriage. You don't even get the benefits from that. Yeah. Well, you get to fuck. That, oh, yeah, that's true. That's, that's the benefit. You know marriage. what? Whatever we do behind closed doors, the government should not give a shit about. But like in America, you can just be who you want to be. Yeah, in that way, that's true. But... In terms of like, uh, like 
I don't know, owning a business or doing something that you want to do. It's like Japan is pretty much the same. Like yeah. I, I'm a filthy guy, Gene, and I opened a business in Japan, so it's yeah. just as free here as it is in America for me. I, I had to jump through some hoops, but I still did it. I think you're right. I think there's a lot of, yeah, I agree. But I mean, freedom. Like, wh- why should America be proud of that? At that point, like, there's other things that you can be proud of. I mean, the thing is, the things that American people tend to be really shame ashamed about I don't know like here's an example like I, I, a lot of people will talk about like there's this negative image or connotation of like people in the south and that is like the south has the strongest like American identity of any place in the US they have a really strong food culture they have a really strong like you know what I mean yeah and like those are the points to be proud about you don't have to have that stupid confederate flag no. just be like hey we have our own unique food culture. We have our own way of speaking. We have our own kind of music. We have all these kind of things that are really, we really beautiful. We fucking invented jazz. Like, isn't that exactly. good enough? Isn't that good exactly. enough? That, that, that's exactly it. Jazz and everything that came from that. Yeah. Rock and roll and all that. It all comes from there. Yeah. And so it's like, the South has so many things to be proud of. It's a beautiful culture. It really is. And to, to like, cling to these, like, statues and, like, flags that represent the worst part about the South... Don't cling to that. Like you have so much more to to be proud of, and and yeah. that's what I want to say to Japanese people and to to people in general from the U.S. It's like, like you don't have to cling to the parts about like oh we're the strongest military in the world or whatever that kind of stuff. That doesn't fucking matter. It's like that's not what other countries respect. That's not what other people care about. If America really clung to their soft power, wait, you define know? soft power. Well, soft power is basically that idea of like. You know their cultural appeal, or like their, like 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 Japan in the eighties. Everybody loved them, yeah. except for like businesses. Who except were for Back to, to the Future Two. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> except for Back to the Future he Two. He got fired by facts. <laughs> <laughs> like except for Donald Trump, like hating on like Japanese industry and stuff like that. Yeah. But like the fact is, like everybody wanted to drive a Toyota. Everybody wanted to wear a Sony Walkman. Everybody wanted to play video Japanese video games. I certainly and did. so it was this whole thing where it was like. Japan didn't have to be a military power. It didn't have to be this country that, like, demanded respect. It was a country that, like, people just saw the appeal inherently. Yeah. Because of what they created and what they did artistically. That's what Japan should try to go back to. That's what everybody should try to do. Yeah. That's what the United States should try to do. Whenever you talk to people in Japan or in Europe or anywhere, anybody who likes America, their point that they get into it is like oh I just love American TV or I love American music or I love this and it's never like I love America because they're so their stance on ISIS is so they're just they're just so free over (laughs) there so so envious nobody says that (laughs) exactly there are things that there are American art forms that have that that are now all over the world but like stand up comedy yeah as it is now (laughs) is a United you know I mean like of course there's comedy there well, are there I, are comedy traditions all over the world but like a man with a microphone or I mean a person with a microphone yeah. standing on a stage telling jokes in that way is a very American tradition it is and I, I want to be fair to our European and Australian listeners like they have their own stand up comedians who are they do incredible of course of course uh, I, Ireland's uh, Dylan Moran is one of my favorite stand up comedians of all time I, I have no I have no qualms with that and I think and like I said I think that there are there are comedy traditions that exist way before com- stand up comedy but like alternative comedy a person standing there with a microphone giving their point of view yeah like that I think that's an American tradition it's very distinctly American because you're you're saying something that would be considered rude in another setting right. and in Japan you just can't do that like even right. Japanese manzai it still plays within the confines of Japanese culture. Oh, Nobody's going. Yeah. No, nobody is stepping outside of that to say something new. Exactly. It's all like, here's a gag where I hit my partner on the back of the head, yeah. and that that's and it's everybody very laughs. Martin and Lewis kind of thing. Yeah, it's like it's like Japan never got over vaudeville. Here's two guys. Hey, yeah. we're we're doing who's on first again? Who wants to see that? Not me. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Like I did when I was an English teacher, I did a lesson on Western stand-up comedy with a very advanced group. I'm like, they're advanced, they're gonna handle it. And I played some I played some recordings and I gave them transcripts of the recordings and we would just we'd read them and discuss them and it I did it with about seven or eight students and at least two of them when I started to play the video said 
where's his partner? Okay. Because they just expect a manzai. They expect yeah. it to be two people. Yeah. And I'm like, no, it's just one guy. It's like, he's got a microphone. And I'm like, but Japan should know that because Japan has Dakugo, yeah. which is basically a prototype of stand-up comedy. It's one guy in front of a crowd telling a story, a humorous story. That's true. And I kind of wish that modern Japanese comedy would embrace Dakugo in the current form where... You don't need to sit on a pillow or dress up. You just yeah. need to like have a microphone and say funny shit. That's why I love it when I see on Facebook or YouTube Japanese comedians or Japanese American, Japanese comedian, can Canadian, Japanese English comedians who do straight up stand up comedy. Yeah. And I mean a lot of it is here's the difference between Japan and the West, but it's still <laughs> funny. But and they're actually making the effort to do it and they do really yeah. well at it. Well, there are. Is it, I don't. A, a lot of Japanese comedy, like I, I agree with you, is, is kind of hokey and whatever. But there are shows where people will just sit down and tell stories. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Storytelling is yeah. great. Yeah. In that I case, love storytelling. In that case, there is no humor gap. Yeah. Like it's the same. Yeah. It's, it's funny in both languages. Right. And so that's what I realized. Like, no matter what country you go to, the way people just talk and sit around, like, if we just sit around and have dinner and hang out with Japanese people or Mexican people or, like, you know, Ir- Iranian people, whatever, we will laugh at the same points when we're just sitting around telling a story. The point where it starts to diverge is the delivery system that we use for telling jokes, like, yeah. when it gets to be, you know, more abstract or whatever. But, you know, I mean, and a lot of those things, like, I mean, the musical is an American genre of of theater. Yeah. And uh, jazz is a very, you know, is the American uh, contribution to the music world and, and blues and, and rock and roll and stuff like that. Um, there's a lot of things like that. There's a lot of these big cultural contributions. And and the, the film industry, I mean, American, you know, America did not invent film, but it definitely has been the key player to, like, you know, to film and television for the last... You know, for the last whatever, yeah, you know, century or whatever. So, I don't know. I think that if we can, I think I, I just wish that people could focus on that kind of stuff. Nobody's going to respect the United States for being the biggest and the and the strongest or the richest. No. Um, the it, one thing we have is a really, really strong, like TV, movie, music culture. Yeah, I, I've always felt that's the the United States' biggest and best output to the world. Yeah. And not that it's the best, it's just, hey, we got a lot of great shit, and we've inspired a lot of great shit. Yeah. And that all comes from just the fact that you have so many people, so many different kinds of people mixing and matching so many different cultural, like, takes on different things. Yeah. And it becomes a very unique thing there, I think. So, I don't know, I, I, I just, I, you know, I wish that thing for Japan, and I wish that thing for the U.S. I just, just, I want them to embrace the soft power, and I want them to realize that, like, if you want to have this social standing in the world, that's where it comes from. I think that there, I think the people who are leading the countries realize that there's no money in that. Maybe, maybe there is. I don't know, but well, I mean, I think the the studios would agree. There's a lot of money in that, which <laughs> has true. led to a trend that I'm, is kind of weird with me, and that is every single fucking Hollywood movie now has to have a, a big scene in Asia, whether yeah. it be China or Korea or Japan, and they do it purely for the purpose of appealing to those markets. Yeah, and. Well, let me tell you this. This is me coming in from my comics angle again. But yeah. this is like, this should be the heyday for comics because you see that that is what's selling. Like Marvel movies, DC shows, whatever. Those are like the big thing. Even here in Japan, they're huge. There's a huge amount of money being poured into that. And yet, comics is this thing where people can't make a living on it. Yeah. And so like, this is a really weird thing. It makes me so furious, like, here in Japan, because I try to tell people, like, oh, you should read American comics, and it's, I don't like superheroes. It's not. And it's like, that's not what it's all about. <laughs> like, there's so many different genres, but that's all that they know. Yeah. And so it's almost like America was back in, like, the 1970s or 80s, where it was like, I don't like anime. It's all, it's all robots. And, stuff like that. and it's like, <laughs> no, no it's there's, there's a lot more than that, you know? And so I think there's probably still people like that who yeah. believe those kind of things, but... Um, you know, I don't know. So I, I, I mean, I'll, I'll say I've read a lot of great non-superhero American comics, but I'm really into the Marvel movies. <laughs> it's my guilty pleasure. I fucking love them like top to bottom. Yeah. I just saw Guardians of the Galaxy two the other day, and I fucking loved it. I really want to see that because I, I think I haven't seen the second one, but the first one for me, 
when I watched that, I thought, this is my son's Star Wars. Yeah. Like, this is, this is that level of, like, world building yeah. and, like, just this weird, creative, whole new thing. Like, when I saw that movie, I thought, if I was 10 years old, like my son was, you know, this would be this would be the Star Wars for right? that generation. You know? Like I, I saw it when it came out with my wife at that time girlfriend and I, I I had this feeling of like this is the to me at the time I was thinking this is the best parts of American culture on display. Yeah. This is an adaptation of an American comic with beautiful music. Not just American music, you got David Bowie in there. We got yeah. some English acts in there. But it was just a perfect amalgam of different elements yeah. that made me think like this is this is a beautiful movie and I'm glad that I could share it with this person yeah yeah it is it's a really yeah yeah second one not as good still fun okay but you should see it well that's the whole thing like I keep thinking like so these new Star Wars movies there have been two now since since the since the terrible trilogy oh my god but the two new movies like I liked them when I saw them I liked them but I kept thinking I kept going back to it and thinking I don't really feel like I want to watch it again. Yeah. And I kept thinking, why don't I want to watch it again? Because like you're 30-something? Well, but I still want to watch the first three again and again. Because you were a kid when you watched them. Well, so what I think, and I might be wrong about this, but I think that the two newest movies aren't fun. They're exciting. I thought... They're interesting. Yeah. But they aren't just, like, silly and fun, like well, the first... I disagree. I thought episode seven was kind of fun. I thought Rogue One was no fun. No, I love I love Rogue One. It's, I, yeah, it's great. It's, it's a great, great movie. Yeah, it's action packed. It's dark as fuck. Everybody dies. Yeah, I thought episode seven was actually pretty fun, and that was mostly because of Finn and BB-8. Yeah, maybe so. Every, like every other character was serious as serious as fuck, but those two kind of had a humor humoristic element to them. I don't know. I, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go out on a limb and like defend the first, the, like the 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 second trilogy. Oh, nobody should. But what I will say is, like, they were kind of fun though. Like they're they're kind of garbage movies, but like, there's a kind of a weird, fun, guilty pleasure to watching. Like, like episode one. I, I can't speak about two and three because I I just I can't hardly get through three or two. But two's the worst. Two's the worst. But. The first one is just like it's just kind of fun. Like if you just don't think about it as a star, as like having to deal with all the Star Wars continuity and stuff like that. If you just like you know what, the pod racing scene is kind of fun to that watch. That is fun. Okay. Yeah. Right. Well, and, and like Jar Jar Binks is stupid and annoying, but like if you were a kid, like it's funny. Yeah. Right. I guess. My my advice is if you're watching the prequel trilogy. And when I say this, I'm not trying to say don't watch them. I'm saying you should watch them. Yeah. But I'm also saying you should watch them after maybe four beers or half a bottle of whiskey. It's your choice. <laughs> but if you do, they're super fun. Because I've done that. I saw one, two, three when they came out in theaters, and I was not impressed by any of them. But when uh, the very first time, the very first experience that you had watching episode one, did you like it? Honestly, okay, yeah. All right. You I'll did, take, right? I'll take that back. Well, because I saw it four times. Okay. Because I because well, I loved it when I saw I it. I saw it four times because I was trying to convince myself that it was good. But you're saying that in hindsight. At the time, did you at really the time, think so? I, at the time, I loved it. Because at the time, I really liked it. At the time, they were talking about uh, galactic trade unions. <laughs> and because I didn't understand it, I was rationalizing it to my high school brain as, uh -huh. oh, you're just a dumb kid. Of course you're not going to understand it. Let's just enjoy <laughs> the fight scenes. And yeah. I did. Yeah, but yeah. And well, I mean, like even two, like two is garbage. Like the 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 love story is garbage, whatever. Yeah. But I remember like jumping out of my seat when Yoda had the fight scene at the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's the there are scenes where it's like, oh man, that's fucking fun. Yeah. It's just fucking fun, and like, I know that George Lucas went off the rails. I'm not gonna say that those are good movies, but what I will say is they're just fun. Like, I okay. So episode three, I think, is the best one. But it's not fun. It's not, it, no, it's not fun. But it's the best one. Of those three. Yeah. Uh, I will say the the best part of the entire trilogy is Ewan McGregor. Because yeah, yeah. he's a good actor to begin with. Yeah. And even though... You get a sense that he kind of knows that he's doing bullshit. But he still does it very seriously. He does it the best way he knows how as a professional yeah. actor. He's really good at that. Especially episodes two and three. Yeah. He's like... He goes from the short beard to the long beard... 
to like the gr- the grizzled old Obi Wan, but you you kind of see him progress on that path, and I I, I, I liked his uh, contributions to two and three particularly. Yeah, I don't know. I, I I don't know. I mean, I just I just I guess I reserve judgment. Like I I don't think that they're good films. Oh, they're, they're definitely not. But I. But they can be fun films. Yeah, I won't say that they're as bad as everybody says that they are. Yeah. So, you know, I, what I think that's missing in the new post Lucas Star Wars universe is that sense of just playfulness. So there's, the new movies are some good. of it though, like the scene in Episode Seven where Kylo Ren is just like fucking freaking out and smashing everything with his sword, and those two yeah. stormtroopers come down the hall and they look at each other like, "Nope," and they turn around and walk back. I laughed at that. That's yeah. great. There That's are a some. great human moment. It's there like, are some good points. The boss is freaking out. Let's go the other way. Yeah, I like that. And there's some good. There's some good moments between you know Han Solo and Chewbacca and stuff like that. Yeah. I, I will say, but there's also it's also kind of a knowing like nod it's to the yeah fans. it's too much fan service that was my biggest complaint with episode 7 because every time han solo was on screen it's reference after reference after reference and i was like just fucking give yeah. it up like something must have happened in the 30 years between this adventure and the last adventure yeah. why is he only referencing this shit yeah. and it got really annoying cuz everything out of his mouth was just hey remember this remember this remember this like yeah, yeah we fucking remember yeah. that's why these movies were made because we remember talk yeah. about something new yeah and that's it really pissed true. me off yeah the i would say yeah for sure like the that point was really annoying and also, I think that these movies, and this is going to sound like I'm, like, I don't want to sound gamer <laughs> I I definitely don't want to sound that way. Okay. But I think a lot of people love those movies because they're more, like, to use the parlance of a time, they're more woke than okay. old Star Wars stuff. Yeah. So, like... No, they definitely are. They are, right? And, and, and that's cool. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Exactly. I, I have no problem with that. But I think that there's a lot of people who, like, like it because it's woke. Yeah. And they don't, like... Like that—that that is actually just, care about the lore. It's just yeah. Like I mean, okay. like it's cool. Like I, I, I want there to be more cool, like prominent black characters and more yeah. prominent cool uh, female characters who actually pass the Bechdel test and like yeah. and aren't aren't just like there as I, I can. I, Ray was hands down my favorite character from Episode Seven. Yeah, she's like, great. She was so good. And 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 uh, what's her name? Jin? No. Yeah, Jin Erso from yeah, Rogue, she's great. Rogue One. She's yeah, great. Yeah, she was great. I love those characters, and I think I think you know Finn is a fucking awesome character. I love that stuff, but I don't think that like having the Star Wars universe be more socially inclusive makes it. I don't think that's enough to make it a good movie. Like it, like they have yeah, to have you, that. Like I like being a good Star Wars. Movie. Yeah, I'd like it to do that, but I'd also like it to be a good movie. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You can't just do one so, or the other. Because here's an example: the new Mad Max movie is fucking great. Oh yeah, and it is, it is much more like, you know, in how can I say, it, it, like, it has a female character who is not whatsoever like reliant on a male character. And not, you know, not sexualized no, there's no, yeah, there's in not any sexualized. way. And there's no love like, story. She's bald and missing a hand. Yeah. I love that shit. Yeah, and that movie's fucking great. Yeah, it's excellent. Yeah. So that is an example of a movie where it was like incidental. Yeah. That it is that it is inclusive. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so that that is really great. I think um, it it sort of like bothers me when a movie is like I don't know revered as being really really great because it's intentionally trying to break those old Hollywood molds, you know? So, I don't know. Well, this conversation has made me need to pee, so okay. just talk about your childhood or something. Actually, I wrote a song that was called Big Dogs, T-Shirt, The Movie, The Song. Okay, I need to ask about all of these layers. Well, it was sort of like, did you ever watch Mr. Show? Yes. So Mr. Show had a skit once that was, if you remember, it was called Ticket. They had a, they had, it was like Ticket the Movie. Yeah. And they had like Ticket the Movie, the, the novelization. And they were like Ticket the new, the movie, the novelization, the ride. <laughs> and like, they kept like taking this ticket theme like <laughs> as far as they could take it. Like just branding something. Okay. And it was kind of based on that joke. And so I was talking to my friend about Big Dogs. I was like, yeah, man, Big Dog t-shirts. I was like, what if somebody made like Big Dog t-shirts the movie 
And then I was like, what if they made Big Dog T-shirt, the movie, the soundtrack <laughs> to whatever. And then I was like, oh, that would have to have their one like main song. So it'd be like Big Dogs, the s- Big Dogs, the movie, the soundtrack, the s- the song. <laughs> <laughs> and I recorded it in some whim, some f- you know, flight of fancy. Never, it never saw the light of day, obviously. But what? the recordings must exist somewhere. Yeah, they exist somewhere. Well, dig them out. Big Dog, the movie. Though. I need I need some musical interstitials for this episode. So, if I find it, please. If I find it. That would be amazing. <laughs> God damn. I, I, when I lived in Komaki about ten years ago, I, I bought a guitar from a hard-off, and I failed to teach myself how to play it. I, I only learned how to play video game songs on it. So I'm like, I need to play to my strengths. I'm going to play a video game song and then make rap music over it. And then I did, and it was real bad. Oh, I've got to hear was, that. No, no, those that I'm <laughs> I'm afraid those files are sealed. So you're like da 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 playing Storm Eagle and then like rapping about Storm Eagle. Yeah, I assume. What were your raps about video games? Yeah, of course they were. Well, okay, now I'm. He's an eagle. Here's what here's what I can provide for you. Okay. If you want some some interstitials, I was in a hip hop group for most of. For most, of, or for part of high school and most of university. Excuse me. And we wrote really weird songs. I wrote a rap about trigonometry. Nice. I wrote a rap that was written as a ra- as a mad mad lib. Okay. Uh, I wrote one called "I Flowbot." <laughs> <laughs> I wrote a song called. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote a song called How Stella Got Her How Stella Got Her Hunchback. <laughs> uh, Please tell me these survive. Oh yeah, I've got them. Oh, thank God. I've got them. I've oh got How God. Stella Got Her Hunchback. God. Um, oh my God. Yeah. They, 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 eventually they got super, like, they got so meta and so, like, self-referential. We wrote a song called, uh, okay, the the group the album the the group that we were called uh, the group that we went by was called Chillin' Dogs. Okay. So we wrote a song called C D C D C D, which was C D was Chillin' Dogs, and then C D like as in a very C D neighborhood. Yeah. And then C D, the C D C D C D compact disc. Okay. The C D C D. So Chillin' CD. Dogs C D compact disc. Right. <laughs> was was this was this like album that we were going to make in the future? We oh always talked God. about. And then one day, we started talking about Merv Griffin. And somebody said, more like Perv Griffin, (laughs) right? So then, we wrote a song. Wait, did he have a a, um, a legacy of being perverted? No, not not particularly. Okay. So we wrote this. He wanted to perv out. Yeah, somebody just said it as a pun, right? So we wrote this song called CD, 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 Perv Griffin in 3D. (laughs) And it was a whole song about getting... Merv Lested by Merv Griffin. <laughs> like, at that point, I realized nobody's going to get any of this shit. I am nobody's going to get why we're talking about Merv Griffin and calling him Perv Griffin. I am going to require this recording. All right, I'll send it to you. Oh, my God. And here's the weird thing about it. It's written in 5-4 time, which Whoa, is like... nobody does 5-4. Yeah, the only two... That's like Mars, Bringer of War by Gustav Holst. There's only like two... Well, I don't know that song. Oh, it's... Uh, yeah. But... There's only like two famous five four songs, right? Okay. One is the Mission Impossible song. Oh yeah. Dun 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 dun. Right. Yeah. And I'm talking about the one before they redid the series because the one with Tom Cruise is which means it's in four four time. Yeah. Um. And the other one is Take Five. Uh, Wait, is it is it Tom Cruise or Tom Cruise? Because I've heard both. <laughs> Are you asking me seriously? I think it's Tom Cruise. Okay. All right. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm totally serious. Yeah. Tom Cruise. <laughs> I think it's Tom Cruise. <laughs> Cruise. And he played a character called Mabedik. <laughs> if I believe He was it. in Yeri Magwide. <laughs> <laughs> He's a yeah, very yeah. good... Sorry, yeah. what were you saying? If I, if I remember correctly, the Japanese title was Ichiban Ue no Ju... 
No. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. I think it was Top best gun. best of man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> best of man. <laughs> that would be a good. That would be a good game to play, where you try to think of Japanese titles for American movies as they would have been dubbed. Oh, right? easy. Top Gun is Top Gaijin. Well, that's why I was saying like Ichiban Way no. Oh yeah. Ju- oh, okay. Um, wait, does it have to be Tom Cruise movies? No, no, but that's a good that's a good way to stick it out. Oh, I All got right, right. Days of Thunder. Uh, coming out in Ohio. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> Right, Wait, next no, one. not literal titles, but just titles. Oh, that's fine. I like you. I like you, doing, I like you doing literal ones. Oh man, because I was gonna do Jurassic Park, and it was gonna be <laughs> killed you, kill Fu. <laughs> well, let me tell you, the direct translation for that would be okay. Juraki no Koen, <laughs> or Juraki no Yuen, maybe. <laughs> My son recently scolded me about this. All right, so we went to the dinosaur museum. Zamidori <laughs> Mairu. Yeah, sorry. We, we went to the, the dinosaur museum in yeah. Fukui here, and they had a toy in the toy shop, in the gift shop, uh, and it was like, it was like, you know, dinosaur, build your own dinosaur. Oh, I saw this on your Facebook. I saw this on your Facebook, but I didn't, I didn't quite understand what was happening. Okay, so it said, build, it, was, it was like, make your own dinosaur model, yeah. Dimetrodon, and they had like ty- Tyrannosaurus and like Triceratops. One of them was a Dimetrodon, and my son was like. Dimetrodon is not a dinosaur. I was like, well, what do you mean it's not a dinosaur? And he said, he said, dinosaurs lived from the Jurassic, or from the, yeah, from the Jurassic period, or Triassic period, until the Cretaceous period. Dimetrodons are from the Devonian period. And I was like, okay, you little dork. Dude, no. I was like, that- like Devonian period, it can't be that much different. He's like, that's 40 million years before the first dinosaur ever lived. And it's like, it's only been 40 million years since the dinosaurs died off. I was like, oh, fuck. Are you aware that your son is badass? <laughs> <laughs> well, he's a dork about dinosaurs. That's, anyway, dude, I can say that's, that. Knowledge is knowledge. So he's trying to tell me that like a Dimetrodon is less dinosaur than humans are dinosaur. Right. And in fact, di- Dimetrodons are probably closer to mammals than dinosaurs. This is the conversation we had. So anyway, we got talking about Jurassic Park and how most of those dinosaurs are not Jurassic dinosaurs. Dinosaurs at all. Yeah. So, but that apparently is a well-known concept. So. So what you're saying is your son's going to open his own Jurassic Park. Yes, that's that's what I mean. Okay. Yeah. That's but what he's, I. But he's going to call it Jurassic, Triassic, and Cretaceous <laughs> Park. And definitely not Devonian Park. The, what if he did make a Devonian Park? People might be like, now where where in the hell is a Tyrannosaur? Uh uh-uh. uh. Uh uh-uh. uh. Uh uh. You are wrong. Not here. Late Not here. You take that elsewhere. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, let's go with this. Okay, I'm gonna give you another Tom Cruise movie. You're gonna tell me the Japanese title. Of course. Ready? Yeah. Eyes wide shut. Oh god. Me 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 ga zuto. What? No. Toy Story movie. Oh wait, I got it. Eyes wide shut. Okay, that's good. That <laughs> yeah, might be what it was called. <laughs> it probably was. Um, let's see. <laughs> Rain Man. Oh, Rain Man. <laughs> <laughs> I may die Balkan. <laughs> <laughs> the Great Rain Adventure. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that, that would disappoint people so much. <laughs> you know, let me tell you an example of people like being disappointed. Logan's Run. Yep. Not connected in any way, even tangentially, to the 2001 series, right? Yeah. yeah. But in Japan, 2001 was a huge hit. Yeah. Logan's Run, they expected, would not be a huge hit. No. So they labeled it like 2,300 uh, at, like to tie it into the 2001 oh, no. series. No, though. No. No, right? No. Zen Zen, no. Zen Zen, no. Although I am pretty sure the Japanese title for Mission Impossible is Kono Mission wa Impossible da. I wonder. It would be really funny if they ever did like direct translations of all those movies. <laughs> it's so like, uh, no. You know what pisses me off the most is the Fast and the Furious. Yeah, being called Wild Speed. Wild Speed. So like the first movie came out, Fast and the Furious. They call it Wild Speed. Fine. Now they're stuck with that shitty name for eight goddamn movies. Yeah, but they don't mind it. I know, but it's such a bad name. 
Yeah, but it's not as bad as Best Kid. No, it's not. <laughs> Best Kid is the worst title for a foreign film in Japan. Yeah, probably. Wait, no. Do you know the Japanese name for Up? Yes, I do. Actually, all of the Pixar movies end up having these bullshit long-ass titles. Yeah. Like, the whole point, Pixar was like, let's give these really brief titles. Up. Brave. You know, Frozen. whatever. Frozen. And then here, they're always, like, super long. Yeah. Like, Brave is like, is like, Mary does a strange, mysterious forest. <laughs> And, like, up is, like, old man Carl's flying house. Yep. And it's, like, just... Just up is a word that kids would get. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Kids would understand that. Yeah. I yeah. don't understand why they do that. Like, they're trying to reach a broader audience, but the uh, the intended audience is kids and their parents, so, like, up is fine. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. Frozen 2. Yeah. Oh, I'd love to see Frozen 2. Yeah. Elsa's Revenge. <laughs> <laughs> the electric boogaloo. <laughs> What about, um, oh shit, see we do a segment on this show where I give my co-host um, Japanese names of movies and he has to try to guess the English name. Okay, and I like one, that. Uh, hang on, I'm going to look some up. Okay. So you regale the audience with tales of your travails and I'll look up some movies. Okay, <laughs> one time there was this travail. <laughs> Stage McLean. No, I did not, ironically enough. That's funny. One time I was typing in Carl Sagan into my phone and it came up as Carl Sagebrush. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Mm. Okay. Carl Sagan, by the way, huh. has a Airdus Bacon score <laughs> of seven, I believe. Good for him. He'll go far. What's he doing these days? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wonder I wonder who has the best Airdus Bacon score I mean, I, I don't I don't think it really matters how close you are Alright, okay, how about this one? Yep Koya no Shichinin Koya? Konya? Koya 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 no Shichinin Seven men in a shack <laughs> You gotta do better than that Koya no Shichinin. Koya no Shichinin. Uh, I assume Koya means like I'll a even, shack. I'll even show you the kanji. Is that Koya or Kono or Koya? Koya. Koya. We were looking for the Magnificent Seven. I'm so sorry. That doesn't even mean magnificent, as far as I know. <laughs> okay. I do apologize. All right, Magnificent Seven. Wait, was Steve McQueen in, this, in the Magnificent Seven? I, I know Yo Brinner was. I know that Charles uh, Bronson was. Hang on, I gotta look for more. Okay. <laughs> While you're looking for that, I would like you to tell me. Okay. Why is Dragon Quest a better series than Final Fantasy? Because Final Fantasy is too preoccupied with melodrama and bullshit, and Dragon Quest is just a straight up adventure. Okay. No frills. Here's your quest, here are the various subquests. Like, Dragon Quest is the reason I have a Dragon Quest tattoo right here. Okay. So let me ask you this. Hi. Dragon Quest, is it as kind of sprawling as Final Fantasy is? Because that's the point that I dislike about Final Fantasy. Not really. Okay. It's very self-contained. It's very, here's your world, here's your quests, do your things, here's the story, you're done. Is it more like a, is it more like a Chrono Trigger kind of gameplay? Yes. Okay, so it's kind of linear. Yeah. Okay. But I want to illustrate why Dragon Quest 1, 2, and 3 are my favorite games in the world. Okay. It's because when I was a kid, they blew my mind. So Dragon Quest 1. 
Did they look in your eyes while they blew your mind? They Yeah, they blew me while they looked in my eyes. Yeah. And then blew my mind by blowing me. Okay. It's really impressive. Yeah, I, it's hard to blow a mind. So, like, Dragon Quest 1, you're, the, you're a nameless hero. You're just a dude. Okay. And the king is like, hey, you're the descendant of the great hero Loto. You need to go out there and take back what the dragon stole. So you go out there and you take back what the dragon stole. And you're done. That's the game. Dragon Quest 2 takes place 100 years later. Hey, you three people are the descendants... Of the guy who stole the dragon shit. No, you're the descendants of the great hero Loto. You're, you're all oh, from okay. the same bloodline. Like, the hero from the first game and the three heroes. They're all uh, kings and queens, or, or princes and princesses of different countries. And okay. they all come together. Hey, because we're all descendants of this bloodline. Okay. So they all come together, and they, they defeat this great evil. So this is like Children of Dune. Kind of. <laughs> Have you ever read those books? Uh, a little bit okay. in middle school, because they had some sex in them. They also have sandworms in them. I was more interested in the sex worms. Sex worms. I, I mean sex. I love sex worms. <laughs> Sexworms.com. Okay. All right. And then Dragon Quest Three opens up. You're a nameless hero. Nobody talks about the legendary hero. It's like he doesn't exist. You wake up. You're 16 years old. Your mom's like, you have to go meet the king. It's time to start your adventure. She's like, all right, I guess I'm going to do that. So you go talk to the king. You start your adventure. You do things. You slay monsters. And then, like, all over the game, like, the first two games, everyone talks about the legendary hero, Loto. It's like, he was the greatest, he did this shit, he did this shit, you're his descendant, we expect great things of you. So, when I played the first game, I thought, oh, okay, so there's no, there's no connection to the first two games, because nobody's talking about the great hero. So you start up the, the third game, and you do it, you, you, you get all your party members together, you beat the big bad, you sure. finish the game... And only at the end of the game do you realize that was very Bill Cosby of me. Only at the only end, end, of end of the game do you get the Kodak film <laughs> and yellow pudding pops. <laughs> okay. Uh, you finish the game, and only then do you find out that it's a prequel and that you are the hero Loto from that oh. everyone was referring to. And as a little kid, that blew my fucking mind. Like, I expect linearity in a trilogy. I think, okay, one, two, three. Like, Star Wars episodes four, five, six. This happens, this happens, this happens. Mm-hmm. And then, but the third game... Like, Back it, to the Future, one, two, three. Yeah. Yeah. But, like, the third game is a secret prequel that they don't tell you about until you're finished with it. And it blew my mind as a kid. Like, yeah. you can do that? Games can do that? This is fucking amazing! And I, just, I love the hell out of it. Yeah. So I should play them. Now, here's the question. Will they require the same kind of time commitment and mental commitment that Final Fantasy games require? Equal or less, I guess. Okay, because that's what I'm looking for. I mean, less, less. Yeah, it's. I mean, they're very simple, like story-wise, gameplay-wise. I mean, Dragon Quest One is easy. It's a solo hero. You're just one guy fighting skeletons and shit. Okay. And then two, you got three party members. Number one is for what system? Famicom, NES, okay. or Game Boy, Game Boy Color, okay. or or on your smart telephone. My smart telephone. There's an i. There, well, there's smart there's, means skinny, right? There, yes, okay. your, your skinny telephone. There's yes. an iOS slash Android version that is also pretty good. I will say, I have met at least no less than ten Japanese people. No fewer who believe. No fewer than <laughs> ten Japanese people. Who believe that smartphone was called that because it is thinner no, than a no no thinner than a no old style phone no don't even don't no okay well I mean, the way you I'm say not that I'm talking to you when I say that I'm talking to Japan I know but the way you plead like that sounds somewhat sexual it makes me feel uncomfortable <sighs> this, no it makes me weird yeah go ahead go into that I just did. <laughs> it's got to be more examples of that, like Japanese people assuming things mean things because of other things. Yeah. Like, oh my god, like this. Okay, not necessarily related to this, but when I was an English teacher, I I was talking to this uh, student that I had. She was she was maybe like late twenties, early thirties, and I, I I used the word salary man, and she knows what that means because she's Japanese, and but. At the end of the lesson, she's like, "So what? I know salary man comes from English. What does it mean?" I'm like, "Well, salary is the money that you get for doing your job." And she was horrified. 
because she thought the salary man was like this great noble profession that like everybody wants to have and I told her no it just means you're working for your fucking wages so you can go home and die at the end of the day and she was she was so taken aback she didn't know how to handle it and I felt kind of bad yeah you kind of ruined it for her yeah let me say this here's yes. a good story this this is a good story you're talking about being an English teacher yes has nothing to do with salary men but this is a good story still interested I had a student who was talking about how her dog, who was not neutered, was constantly wanting to hump things okay, around the right, house. Okay, right, as dogs do. So he had, like, a particular stuffed animal he loved to hump. Uh, he had, like, you know, whatever. And he's got and designated humping spaces. Designated humping spaces. And she said she would take him for walks, and partway through the walk, she could tell that he wanted to hump something, right? He would look at her with this look in his eyes... And she knew that that's what he wanted to do. Oh, boy. And so she'd say, ah, there's nothing around here. Okay. And she would put her hand... No! ...into a circle. No. <laughs> like a ring. No. And she would put it down there. No. And she would let her dog hump her hand. No. And when she told me the story, I said, let me just double check that I'm getting this right. <laughs> Are you saying... That you jerked off your dog <laughs> in the park. No. And she said, yeah, all the time. Wow. How big was this dog? Uh, small. Okay. Does all that right. make a difference? Kind of. Like, if it's a giant dog and you're doing it in so the park. So it's like a real D. That's kind of weird. That's yeah. the real yeah, D. Yeah, it's like a, like a... That's like the human D. Big old donkey dick. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I oh, guess it man. makes a difference, but but it kind of doesn't. Like it's kind of like, you know, you're jerking off a dog. Like, like, I understand that people feel their dogs are like their family or something, but like you wouldn't jerk off your kids. No. Yeah, probably not. I would say. I would hope not. Yeah, like unless it's a life or death situation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, I guess okay. Let me let me just be really magnanimous here and say like, if my son was gonna die, right, and the, and the only, only way, way to save his life was to jerk him off, you would do it. I would try to find somebody to do it. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I would try to find somebody to do it. Because you're a loving father, and yes. you've got to save your kid's life. You just got it. Yeah, okay. but if it came down to just me. <laughs> oh no Well let me say this much I wouldn't do it in the park <laughs> What's happening in the park Where a life or death situation Forces you to jerk off your own son <laughs> Hopefully nothing is happening you, uh, you don't know about Trump's but America what if, man. <laughs> I you guess just I don't, don't know. But what if you're like on an alien spaceship And they're like Jerk off your son or we're going to execute both of you <laughs> I might <laughs> That might be better to die. <laughs> like, if they're going to execute only him and let me live, then that would then I'd be like, okay, fucking, I'll do it. Yeah. But if they're going to, like, okay, we're going to execute both, I'd be like, let me talk to him for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Son, there comes a time. <laughs> In every man's life when he has to die on an alien spaceship. Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> like I, I, would, I would assume he would be cool. They'd be like, you know what, no, I'd rather just, you know... <laughs> Let's just avoid that awkward situation. I would hope his first question was, is it painless? <laughs> I would assume aliens are humane like that. I mean, they've got everything down to routine, down to a science. What if his first question is, are you good? Okay. All right. Then I'd be like, fuck it. Kill him. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's not about him being gay. That's about him wanting his father to jerk him off, just so everybody knows. Yeah. <laughs> that, is not a, that is not acceptable. I, I'm going to send this file to you so that you can listen to it before it's posted, so don't <laughs> worry. I imagine a lot of things are going to be cut. Yeah. Okay, I've got another Japanese movie title that I'd like you to guess in English. Okay. I mean, it's an English movie with a Japanese movie title, and uh, this movie is Dai Dasso. I know that one. Fuck. That's The Great Escape, isn't it? You're right. But that's like a direct translation. It is. That makes it too easy. Yeah. Fuck! I think I could find a good one for you, but I, I'd have to have... Actually, I'll get my phone. Can I grab... Yeah, go for it. Back here? Go for it. Oh, I feel like I 
I'm working here. <laughs> you're hired. Yes. And you're fired. Oh. I mean, if you want to give me some Japanese titles, I'm happy to guess them. Yeah, that's what I want to try to do. Oh, do it. I'm totally down with that. <laughs> All right, you ready for one? Mm-hmm. I'll give you some hints before we start. Okay. The main character is voiced by Gabriel Damon. Who? His mother is voiced by Helen Shaver. Who? <laughs> right, exactly. Okay, here we go. The Brave Little Toaster. Oh, that's not a bad guess. Oh, shit. Oh, uh, Land Before Time. <laughs> you saw. You <laughs> no, saw I, no, I didn't. But you said Brave Little Toaster. I said Brave Little Toaster, and you said Close. So I imagined, oh, there's a son and mother relationship from that era of film. And I just assumed Land Before Time. Well, I will tell you, it would have not been very hard for you, because it's called Little Futo no Dai Boken. <laughs> Nazo no Kyoryu Dai Taidiku. Oh, great. <laughs> we well, better find another one then, because that was way too easy. Alright, your movie is going to be. Hit me! Ready? Yes! Okay. Fushigi no Mori no Yosei Tachi. Fern Gully. <laughs> we did this one on the show already. <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck? Why? We've already why, why would you and I retry, retrace the same fucking steps? That movie was garbage by all accounts. <laughs> yes, it was. Why would anybody... But yes, it should have been called Fushigi no Gomi. <laughs> yeah, that, that is a much better <laughs> much better assessment. Yeah, we, we've done that one on No More Whoppers before, unfortunately. <laughs> well, there's that. All right, I'll give you an easy one. <laughs> Shimin Kane. I know that one, Citizen Kane. There you go. It took Ray a while to get that one. That's pretty obvious, <laughs> if you know the word Shimi. I love that that was a Japanese title, though. Yeah, that's pretty Shimi garbage. Kane. That's pretty garbage. Oh. Okay, I got one for you. Do it. This is pretty easy. Kitsune to Ryoken. What? Oh, the fox and the hound. <laughs> All right, God damn, easy. dude. At least try. Well, I'm... Do something like... Uh, I don't know. Oh, okay. Huh. All right. Okay. I'm ready now. Do it. Um, E.T. Yeah. No. T.E.? I did, I did look that up. <laughs> and it was just E.T.? <laughs> or Extra Terrestrial. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Feris wa aru asa totzen ni... Say that again? Ferris wa aru asa totsuzen ni. Ferris peel his day off. Yes. I mean, Ferris gave it away. Yeah. But the, one morning, Ferris one morning suddenly. <laughs> yeah. So literally, yeah, literally that is Ferris one morning suddenly. Uh, I'll give you one more. Okay. Oh, this one's pretty hard. Give it to me. I don't think you're gonna get it. Give it to me anyway. All right. Koneko Monogatari. Koneko Monogatari. Kitten adventure. Kitten story. Yeah. Fuck. Um, Milo and Otis. Wow. Really? Yeah. Is it really? Yeah. Why don't, why don't they mention the dog? I don't know. What the fuck? Japan only cares about cats? Koneko Monogatari, the adventure of Chatran. <laughs> it's a Star Trek Betsudai, character. The adventures of Milo and Otis. <laughs> Why was it not Milo to Otisu? What the fuck? Because that's a garbage title in Japanese. <laughs> and in English. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow, good job. Nice one on the Milo and Otis dig. Well, I'm, you kind of you've kind of given me a window into the frame of years that I reference. Exactly. It's like 80s, 90s. I can probably guess it. These are all 80s movies, aren't they? If you went earlier or later, it might be harder. All right, let me try one more then. Do it. I'm going to go a little bit later. Do it. I'm going to make a drink. Um... And I should say, as a guest of the podcast, you're entitled to a free pint. Uh, I think I'll refrain, though. What? Kill me, man. 
I've got work in the morning and I will. What about another shot of cinnamon whiskey? Are you against that? I guess I'll do that. Nice. Ooh, this one you'll never get. Good, give it to me. This one you will never get. Are give ready? it to me! Dysinon PTA. Dysinon PTA. Kindergarten cop. No. Now, PTA is important. Because it's like teachers. It stands for something. It's not Parent Teacher Association? Nope. What? Uh, fuck. Think of a movie title that starts with, that has the initials PTA. Um, Phantom Thieves Arrangements. Yes, how did you know? Because I, I, I played Persona 5. Oh, fuck, I don't even know if I can do this shot, but it's going to happen anyway. Let me give you a hint. Okay. Ah, this is a big hint, though. Was it Dai Sai? Dai Sai Nan. Can I see the kanji? Or would yeah. that give it away? No, you can see it. It's cover up. Okay, hang on. Okay, I don't even know those kanji outside of die, so... No, you know, sai is like disaster and none is like to flee. Okay. Dai sai non PTA. What? Dai sai non PTA. The important point is actually the PTA. Fleeing great disaster PTA. You want the director? Yes. John Hughes. Uh, fuck. Do you want... I'll take any of the actors. Okay. I have no Top build? Idea. Yep. Steve Martin. What? If I give you second build, you're gonna get it. Really? I doubt that. I have no idea what the fuck is going on right now. John Candy. Planes, trains, and automobiles. That's what? the PTA part. Why is it Dai Sai? What is it? Dai Sai. Dai Sai Nan. Dai Sai Nan. What the fuck? I mean, I guess that makes sense. <laughs> well, I'm, there you go. I'm glad I realized. <laughs> I wouldn't have guessed it. Dai Sai Nan PTA. There you go. <laughs> that's a pretty good. That's a pretty good one. Well, now we know. What about... Okay. Okay. Oji-san ni ki o tsukero. Mr. Magoo. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Oji-san ni ki o tsukero. Uh, Oji-san ni ki o tsukero. Um, <laughs> fuck, fuck. Be careful about that. <laughs> about that middle-aged man or that uncle. Um, oh, oh, oh. Um, fuck, fuck, fuck. Hang on. Hold on, wait. Fuck, um, it starts with A. No. Fuck, okay, then I'm wrong. Uncle Buck. No, really? <sighs> How about this one? Okay. John Candy no Dai, Shin De Dai Shingeki. Camp Candy? Canadian Bacon. What? Wait, the title of Canadian Bacon is in called J John Candy's Big Attack. <laughs> It really was, though. I mean, we can't refute that. <laughs> Holy shit. That's so weird. All right, we need to do this one last shot or else it's never going to get done. All right. And then I want you to give me a movie or two. We got to get her done. Get her done! Kampai. Kampai. Well, the John Candy movies was a good choice. John Candy is always a good choice. Okay, are you ready? Yes. Give it Here to me. Yes. Go. Put it in my face. Mikuro Kids. What? Mikuro Kids. Kids. Mikuro. Is there a kanji for Mikuro? No, no, like micro. Oh, micro. Micro Kids? Oh, honey, I shrunk the kids. Yeah. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Find out what uh, honey, I blew up the kid is. Because I'm very curious now. Uh, Please tell me it's. Giant baby. <laughs> Can you imagine going to the movie theater and you're like, two for giant baby, please? God damn it. That's the worst. Two for giant babies. Giant baby. <laughs> Micro kids oh, and giant baby. That's going to be uh, the, the documentary about Donald Trump's presidency. Yeah, yeah the giant baby. 
I had a load of fun with you, Adam. I had a load of times. I had a load of. I had a load. Oh, oh no! Oh no! But I don't have a load anymore. Oh well, okay. Did, did you flush it, or is it in your pantalones? Uh, two loads. One load triggers the other load. This is very impressive. Either way. Yeah. Not gonna lie. Yeah. But um, whenever I, th- I have a load of semen, it makes me poop. <laughs> that's what I meant to say. I, that's gonna be on your tombstone. Thank you, everybody, for listening. This has uh, been a bonus episode of No More Whoppers, featuring bonus, featuring Adam Passion of Nagoya, Japan. And Alex Fraley of Italy, I guess. I don't know. Uh, yeah, so thanks for listening. Uh, we'll be back. Ray and I will be back eventually uh, whenever our, our schedules coincide. But in the meantime, expect more of these impromptu recordings from the bar. From the bubbles! Oh, bar. I gotta go. Okay, bye. He's just like, I fucking love numbers. Yeah, he's like, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that, and I'm gonna do that. That one, oh, that one's open, I'm doing that one.